Our next presenter is a, uh, uh, my, the, a, a longtime friend, right? Somebody I've known for now eight plus years, uh, first at, uh, at VMware and then at Pivotal, and he's gone on to uh, different things. He's, we get to now collaborate together as part of the ecosystem. He's now at Google, where he is a, a technical program manager for serverless, helping define things uh, around GCP and GCP compute and so on. Please welcome our next presenter, Mark Schmarney. Thank you so much. Great to be back at uh, Spring One. It's been, it's been a few years. Uh, let me see if I can get the slides right here. There we go. So um, the topic I want to talk about today is um, Kubernetes and serverless, specifically uh, Knative, the project you've heard mentioned a couple times already today. But before we go there, I want to spend a couple minutes talking about the collaboration between Google and Pivotal delivering a very idiomatic experience for Spring developers on GCP. Today, I can honestly say that Spring is a first-class citizen on GCP. Uh, Spring, plus the managed services the GCP provides, enables developers really to deliver a set of uh, scalable and maintainable applications or solutions on GCP uh, that they frankly couldn't have done before. Some of the uh, examples here, we have uh, excellent coverage across the Spring Boot starters. Uh, you can see these across uh, uh, most of the components there. Uh, you can get that as part of the Spring, uh, Spring Initializer, uh, just through the GUI. You, many of you are familiar already with that. Just search for GCP or Google. Both of those will work, and choose the components you like. You can also um, install a IDE into, uh, into Eclipse or IntelliJ and choose those components uh, using the GCP plugin in there. Whichever way you get there, um, there is a pretty significant integration options that you get on GCP. And uh, the example I like to use around, these, uh, around the insights into the mo monitoring and diagnostics capabilities uh, with Spring's GCP logging starter, which automatically um, exports your logs to Stackdriver, uh, correlates all the logs across the different instances that you might have, uh, and it uh, provides the distribu distributed tracing for those. Just one of the many examples uh, where, where Spring on GCP is just uh, idiomatic, is natural, and, and it works just like you would uh, intend it to. Uh, similarly, on Cloud Foundry, uh, we, uh, with PCF, we del uh, deliver a pretty delightful experience there, I think, with native support both for uh, multi-region uh, or global HTTPS uh, um, load balancers when you're deploying your applications, support for preemptive uh, uh, VMs, um, uh, as well as a deep integration into the open, uh, open service broker uh, with uh, transparent uh, provisioning of different GCP services that are just uh, working as if you were working on, on your local instance. Uh, so if in, a, in a capability, uh, in specifically the example I like to use here is that if you take uh, the cloud uh, SQL um, uh, provider, you will get a database instance from GCP that will give you automatic discovery for your application and, and configure your data sources automatically. There's many more examples. Uh, uh, for example, Apogee has a microservice gateway that uh, helps greatly with modernizing your existing applications on Google. All right. So uh, now that we've done that, I want to talk about Knative, uh, uh, back to the serverless and Kubernetes. Back in July, we launched uh, Knative at uh, GCP Next. Uh, it's an open source project uh, that, that provides some foundational, foundational blocks for building serverless applications on Kubernetes. Uh, we developed this uh, in collaboration with Pivotal and a number of other partners. It's available on uh, GitHub today under Apache 2 license. Uh, the projects you will find today are serving, built, and eventing as well as a number of other uh, peripheral projects related to those. We're constantly evolving the scope of different building blocks we need to add there. Um, back um, when we first started uh, thinking even about uh, Knative, there was probably 15 or 18 different, uh, depending on how you count, different uh, function-as-a-service frameworks out there. And uh, we did not want Knative to be just N plus one there and, and just be yet another framework that developer would be confused by. Uh, but in the same time, we saw a, a huge amount of duplication uh, in uh, some low-level components of integrating those frameworks on top of Kubernetes. 
uh, there were the difficult but boring aspects of, of working, whether it's autoscaler, function invoker, event binding, uh, or even uh, some blue-green deployments patterns for your applications. So uh, Knative, I can, I can honestly say today, Knative runs uh, natively on, <laughs> on GKE uh, or on top of Kubernetes or any Kubernetes certified instance like GKE, but it also runs on PKS, uh, whether it's in a cloud or on-prem. So no, no lock in there at all. A uh, little on, on serverless. I think I want to unpack that because that term is really used uh, to describe pretty much everything nowadays. Uh, the most uh, part, the most correlated part that I see is around the function as a service, where developers throw a snippets of code onto a cloud and, and just run it for the compute functions. But serverless is so much more than just function. It's so much more than even compute. Uh, usage patterns uh, with uh, 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 interacting with uh, really represents a usage pattern that developer has interacting with the platform. Uh, it, it's supposed to free the developer from worrying about the underlying infrastructure, uh, something that would allow them to not think about hardware or the OS or the network or the storage, but really focus on the thing that they want to do, which is develop the code. Um, now, you might be asking, how does serverless do this? Obviously, you cannot get that experience uh, right now on Kubernetes. Um, so that's why we've introduced project Knative. Uh, so Knative, first of all, addresses the serverless usage patterns uh, from bottoms up with Kubernetes itself. Uh, it's important also to uh, uh, one of the important aspects of that is that it clearly separates the responsibilities between the operator of the system and the application developer who develops on top of that. And we want to make sure we develop the serverless experience for both of those as much as possible. Uh, but I want to focus today about developer. Before we go there, uh, really the, the, the parts that Kubernetes gives us here is the abstraction over the management of the infrastructure. Uh, uh, it has an existing vibrant ecosystem of different tools, whether it's for logging, monitoring, uh, or, or integration parts, CI, CD tools. Uh, and it has a broad, more importantly, has a broad support from cloud service providers. It's, it's hard to imagine a cloud service providers nowadays that would not have a Kubernetes offering. And if that offering is certified, you can run Knative on that platform. So what does it do for the developer? Uh, well, uh, developers, as far as I know, uh, just want to write code. So uh, what Knative does is introduces a layer on top of Kubernetes uh, uh, deployed through a set of custom resource definitions that are deployed into Kubernetes that extend the capability of what Kubernetes can do. It addresses the gap where you would want to be for serverless and where Kubernetes is today. Uh, that gives you an additional capability into kubectl. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, that's kind of where you uh, mostly interact with. Uh, but for serverless developers, we also uh, start introducing option to add your own CLI. Uh, we've done that for the uh, Knative offering on, G, uh, on GKE with uh, gCloud. I know the Rift team is also prov prov uh, working on one of those uh, CLIs uh, to interact with. So whichever way you connect to it, you really don't have to work about, uh, worry about the Docker, uh, building Docker images. You don't have to upload your images to registry, deploy those services, or manage, uh, uh, about manage the exposing the services of those services to the internet, uh, supply logging or scaling, or any of that. So uh, what, uh, I just told you the things that Knative uh, allows you not to worry about, but what Knative can do for you today. Uh, so first of all, it, it really a, um, enables you to uh, developers to build, deploy, and manage uh, modern serverless workloads on Kubernetes. Uh, what I want to make sure I stress the modern aspect here. Right now, we're solving predominantly for stateless applications. So whether it's a function, application, or microservice, if you deploy that onto Knative, it, it should really get a pretty good experience. Uh, K uh, Kubernetes itself solves a lot of the stateful workloads with batch and, and kind of stateful sets. Uh, so uh, if you have to fall over from, uh, from Knative to Kubernetes, you're, you're not falling too far. Uh, Knative also exposes a set of a, uh, declarative APIs that, that streamline many of the aspects of application developer to, uh, develop, development today. Uh, it's uh, deployment, whether you're building from source or image, uh, that should be pretty easy. Uh, it makes the resource management a lot easier. You don't have to worry about the ingress or network regis uh, or the registry configuration or pod scaling, uh, and automates many of the aspects of uh, deployment, including scaling or auto-scaling for of your workloads. 
Uh, now, Kubernetes, is you're very, if you've kind of heard about what it does, it's, it's really good about scaling from, N, from 1 to N, so uh, kind of responding to the workloads. What we also have now with Knative is an ability to scale down to zero, so, or, uh, or scale workloads down when they don't receive the actual work uh, pressure, which is very, uh, very critical when you start working about some of the more um, uh, function as a service kind of offerings. So uh, I realize we haven't done a demo today, so I'm going to do one. What I want to show is uh, a, kind of a demonstration of a pipeline that's uh, showcasing source, all the way from source, Java application, because we're in a spring conference, all the way to URL. Um, Mark uh, Fisher is going to come later, talk about the eventing portion of that, and kind of showcase some of the uh, cap capabilities of Knative there. But in this case, I'm going to focus on, on build pipeline. I'm going to use, um, I'm also going to uh, showcase the logo of uh, JIP, the Java image builder, an, another open source project uh, from Google that streamlines a lot of the processes. Uh, the, the, the experience I want to show today doesn't expose that, but I want to make sure you kind of see what's running underneath. Can you switch to the other demo? All right. So what I've got here is a, a couple of command lines. Let me just kind of give you the layout of the land. On the very top, I'm going to be running uh, commands, basically just asking Kubernetes to give me a set of pods. Um, now the Wi-Fi will work out one of these days here. And uh, what I also am going to be doing is uh, using IntelliJ to kind of showcase a, a pi build pipeline. As a developer, this is an, uh, I'm showcasing here a, uh, or showing you the project that's uh, including a number of different demos uh, for Spring on GCP. You can deploy any one of those. I'm going to be using the uh, GCP Vision API sample today. Um, and as a developer, as, like I said, all I want to do is just push that code to Git repository. Uh, what I'm going to be doing, demonstrating now, is a pipeline that normally a CI CD tool would be doing for you. But in order to illustrate that uh, so that we don't just look in the log file, uh, I will kind of walk you through it. What Knative does is expose a manifest kind of structure that you can configure with the build step as well as with the revision or application configuration step. In this uh, build step, we're going to be building directly from a source repository. You can take a look at it over here. It's a public repo, so you can take, uh, take a look at the samples there. We'll build from a specific branch of that code, uh, and we will be using a particular pipeline. Now, uh, Knative uh, provides a number of different pipelines. Today, we're going to be using the JIP Maven pipeline. Uh, and then when we were going to uh, build the code, we're actually going to create a, an image and publish that image to a Google uh, uh, container registry uh, under a particular version. And then uh, we will deploy that version to, a, to, the, um, uh, to the instance of Knative. All right, so like you said, we have no, in, no um, existing pods in here. So we've seen the, uh, the work. Uh, the job was scheduled. I want to also monitor that pod just to kind of show that this is truly building a Maven-based uh, 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 pipeline behind the scene. Uh, let's do also here, maybe. We'll see the build pipeline go through a number of different stages. Uh, first of all, it's going to pull the code. Now, this, all of this should be happening on a server, so hopefully the speed of the Wi-Fi is not going to be much of an impact here. We see uh, Maven doing its work. It's pulling the source code. It's building. Uh, one of the benefits of the JIP builder is that it uh, heavily layers uh, the different uh, 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 downloads, the dependencies, and optimizes the, the kind of build process so that uh, it should really take for the entire application, in our particular case, uh, 24 seconds. Uh, we'll see on the top here our image actually being deployed. And if the demo gods work with me, we should be seeing an application here pretty soon. Now, what, uh, just quickly switching over here, uh, what we've deployed is an actual service. The name of the service was Vision. 
and it was deploying into namespace code default, that, um, uh, that pattern should allow you to go to a browser and still thinking. Let's check on the status. Yeah, it's running. Well, that worked a lot faster in, a, in rehearsal. <laughs> there we go. So uh, not to bore you here, but uh, we have an image. Uh, I chose a lion and a, uh, and a monkey kind of trying to looking for a good time. Uh, we're going to take this image, copy, and we will have a classification of this right from the build. And again, I was using a lot of the Spring starters, so the amount of code that I had to write specifically for GCP was nominal, other than configuring the actual application. All right, can I switch back to slides? Now, why this uh, was interesting? Uh, why would developers like yourself really care about that? First of all, if you've done anything recently, if you're, for example, working on, on Mac or Windows or Chromebook, uh, and you had to build two Kubernetes, you had to deal with cross-compiling and deploying to a Linux-based environment. Uh, in my situation, I did not have to do any of that. They, the, the entire build process is done on a server. Uh, so there is no, in, no need for Docker to install locally, locally and dealing with the consequences of what that means. Uh, because this is cloud and the resources there are supposedly elastic, uh, I was able to uh, provision the right, right amount of resources and make sure that the build is also fast. And because of uh, the ex uh, automation and kind of integration pieces, uh, there's a great amount of ability to introduce a, um, uh, your custom uh, requirements, whether it's around uh, the build policy, whether it's audit trail for your compliance, whatever that may be, it's easy to inject. Again, I was demonstrating the CI CD tool. You can do this entire pipeline in your favorite CI, CI CD tooling. Um, uh, and uh, also, one of the things that JIP uh, added over here is that uh, we are able to, dem to build very uh, reproducible images. That's, uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. A lot of times, timestamps and the different variation within the code will offset the image. With using JIP, we're able to build a reproducible images, meaning the same input will always guarantee the same output. Thank you very much. Um, there is a number of uh, documents you can easily start uh, with today. You can install Knative yourself by going to the GitHub repository and just downloading the code with this number of installs and how-to documentations. If you're not uh, crazy about standing up your, your own Kubernetes cluster, uh, we also provide a, a kind of a single-click uh, add-on capability for GKE uh, right now, where you can just specify an additional flag, and it will deploy a fully validated instance of Knative for you. Uh, the community is growing. I, I, uh, the number of Pivotal team uh, people are involved in here, as well as the broader community. Uh, so we have Slack channel to, to kind of collaborate on this project. And if you have any questions, you can always reach me on Twitter. Thank you very much.